Here we are at the dream. I'm just going to take a walk up and I'll just give you a bit of history. So, 1906, work on Sutton Manor Colliery commences. The local coal proprietor Richard Evans sinks number one shaft with a diameter of 18 feet. This was completed in December 1909 when the shaft was extended to a depth of 1,823 feet. The sinking of number two shaft of Sutton Manor began in July 1906. With the shaft diameter initially measuring 22 feet, this was completed in 1912 and extended to a depth of 2,343 feet, the equivalent of five Blackpool Towers. In 1910, coal production starts at the colliery. In 1964, this year sees Sutton Manor Colliery at its height, employing 1,400 people and producing 1,500 tonnes of coal per week. In 1983, the National Coal Board announced a £14 million investment in Sutton Manor that they predicted would provide a kit of life for the viable pit, converting it into one of Britain's most modern collieries. In May 1984, a year-long strike commences. This is a particularly different, difficult period in the colliery's life, not only for the pit, but its workforce as well. In May 1991, British Coal announced that the pit was unviable and is scheduled for closure. They claimed that Sutton Manor Colliery had lost £23 million over the previous five years. And in June of that year, the colliery closes with over 40 years of coal still left underground. In 2001, the Forestry Commission leased the site from St Helens Council and after consulting with the local community, put Project Wasteland to Woodland into operation. In 2004, first a heavily compacted soil was prepared for tree planting and habitat creation, a procedure that took two months. Then 50,000 young trees, including alder, willow and ash, were planted. The experts at the Forestry Commission shows mixes of slow and fast growing trees. In 2006, Sean Daney, the Arts Officer for St Helens, writes his application and nominates the former Sutton Manor colliery site for a new Channel 4 TV programme called The Big Art Project, where sites aim to inspire and create unique works of public art across the UK. It's an opportunity for the public to be at the centre of a unique initiative right where they're living and become a central character in a primetime TV series. Sean wasn't alone, however, as more than 1,400 people across the UK also nominated sites with their own local communities. With so much competition, it was clearly going to be tough to make the final. Of course, but the St. Helens bit has an edge. As a former miners focus group have been quickly formed as part of St. Helens Council. The former pit men have a strong connection with their old workplace in Sutton Manor and were keen for a form of memorial on the site. Former miner Garen Conley is asked to come on board to form a small focus group of ex Sutton Manor miners who will work with an artist to commission an artwork backed by the local authority. Important Behind the scenes council contributions are made and the project is given a working title. Ex terra lucium. From the earth comes light. It's at the time St. Helens' former town motto, based around coal and glass, together to identify with a mission statement for the artwork. February, the council re recruited Laurie Peak of our commissioning agency, Liverpool Biennial, to act as a curator. Laurie has only recently commissioned Anthony Gormley's work on Crosby Beach, entitled Another Place. Commissioned independent production company Carbon Media to make the TV series and recruited a number of art and regeneration experts to sift through the applications. Within months, 
Channel 4 announced a short list of 12 sites, which includes the St Helens bid. The selection panel then had the tough task of narrowing down the dozen sites to the six that would feature. In April, the six wing sites are announced and the former Sutton Manor Colliery site misses out on the UK's biggest ever public art commissioning scheme. The big art project would instead comprise communities in Burnley, Cardigan, Isle of Mull, Newham in East London, North Belfast and Sheffield. All the planning and discussions with proposed stakeholders and funded funders in St Helens had come to nothing, or had it. In November, the project opening body, the Big Art Trust, seeing that all of the chosen sites were encountering difficulty, decided to review its decision on discarding St Helens and include the Sutton Manor site as a seventh location. In February 2007, former Miners Steering Group, chaired by Laurie Peake, hold a meeting to select an artist to work with. From a short list of 12, the former Miners unanimously choose renowned Catalan artist Shane Plenza to submit a proposal, of which accepts. In April, Barcelona born Plenza visits Sutton Manor site, meeting former miners and a close bond is formed, with him saying the miners are so strong people, but they are also passionate. The site is an amazing place. In February 2008, Plenza returns to St. Helens with his new proposal called Dream. Dream takes the form of a head and neck of a nine-year-old girl that has been elongated by a third. Her eyes are closed in quiet contemplation, dreaming not only about her future, but also that of the former colliery site and St. Helens. It's proposed that the landmark will give hope and aspirations for future generations and become a positive symbol for the area. It's to be constructed in English concrete and Spanish dolomite marble. It's white to replicate light and to contrast the darkness of the mine and coal that lies beneath. Finally, she is to sit on a plinth of giant miners' tally as a reminder of the heritage of the site. The structure is to be lit with an additional beam of light from the sculpture's head that goes into the sky. The former man is lover and give it their full backing. In September, St. Helens Council grants conditional planning permission for the dream. However, the team's delight that the work could finally begin in earnest was tempered by the news, albeit expected, that dream could not for the time being be illuminated. In the October, Evans Concrete of Derbyshire wins the contract to fabricate dream in 90 individual panels of precast concrete, which is to be conveyed to St. Helens in sections. In 2009, the topping off ceremony takes place as the final section of Dream is winched into place, to much media publicity. In the May 2009, Channel 4's five week TV series, The Big R Project, starts with St. Helens site and Dream becoming pivotal to the success of the programme. Along with Burnley, St. Helens becomes the only site to produce a piece of artwork of such magnitude. The Dream is 20 metres high, over its fine ocean piles go almost twice the height down on the ground. On average, 100,000 vehicles pass the Dream daily, increasing to more than 35 million vehicles each year. A 
total of 6,160 man hours were spent on site during the construction of Dream, and more than 5,500 cups of tea and coffee were drunk. These are just some of the amazing at a glance facts and figures that lie behind the story of the Dream. So, there you have it, and there you can see the Dream in all its glory. All the woodland, all around. It's a lovely walk here. It's a lovely walk just to walk up to the dream and to see. It stands in 20 metres tall. You can see this from the M62 motorway. So there you go, guys. There we have the dream. It's well worth a visit, especially if you live in the area or if you're passing through. Uh, it's been seen on a couple of TV shows. Yes, so the dream has been in a couple of TV shows. Um, the most recent one being on Netflix, on a programme called Stay Close with James Nesbitt. And it was also visited by Ricky Tomlinson and Ralph Little in a very northern road trip. So I'm going to leave you here this time guys. And hopefully see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.